It's like, you know, be free, it's fine, go traveling, do whatever you do to make yourself feel good. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, it's water, just, you know, be, love, and all that. So the title of the song Water For Your Soul came up when I was on a trip in France and I realised that my water was music whilst I was travelling with this chap that I was with. This is like five or six years ago. And I was getting a bit moody with life because I hadn't made any music, but I, I had no idea that that was why I was getting moody. And... Um, we were just walking along and he was just like, oh, for God's sake, just go make some music. Just go write a song or something. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. I haven't written a song for months. We've just been driving around in this van, you know, wasting away our days doing not a lot, you know. I needed to write a song. And he knew that, he saw that in me before I knew that. Um, so hence the song Water For Your Soul, and it's about traveling and, and realizing what you like and embracing what you like. It doesn't have to be what the next person likes. It's what's important to you, it's what's necessary. Food and water and air. That's my music. But there's something about you, baby, you say. The title for the album actually came from a song that we had not included on the album. And everybody was, everybody meaning, you know, Jonathan Shorten and Steve Greenwell and the people that were working on the record with me were like, but Joss, it's the title track. You can't take it off the album. It's the title track. Well, I did because it doesn't fit. And when you hear it, you understand. like. It's not that it's bad, it's just that it doesn't fit with the rest of the music. And the way I see an album, I see it as one piece. So when you drop the needle on the vinyl, it should continue to play and you shouldn't have to worry about skipping the track because it throws you off your energy. It's nice to have a... Um, have a involvement from the fans. It's nice that they were able to join in. But the problem was is that I, I announced that we were going to have this artwork competition on an album that they've never heard before. So I tried to explain, okay, the album's going to be... I hadn't even finished making it at this point. Okay, I'm in the studio, I'm getting close to the end, in my opinion, which obviously I wasn't. So I'm there and I'm kind of saying, well, it's kind of reggae, it's kind of hip-hop, it's kind of R&B. There's some Brazilian things going on in there, there's some other bits and bobs. But really, it's just just be free and do whatever you want. And from that, we got loads of artwork back that was just amazing, like really creative. And we gave them picture to work with and stuff. I like to collaborate more than I do anything, really. Um, when it's me, and only me, and I'm there with a guitar or a piano or something, it takes me ages, and I will do it. I mean, there's a song called Boatyard on LP1 that I wrote in my van with the guitar, and he'd gone off on the boat, and it really freaked me out, and I thought, oh my God, what if he dies? <laughs> ah! Let me write a song about it. <laughs> so... I did, I began, and it's so, I'm so bad at playing guitar that it just takes me such a long time, so it stops the flow a bit for me. Um, I have to think about, how do I make this chord? Um, rather than, what am I talking about? And I want to think about that, because that's what I'm good at. I'm not good at this. So um, I called Jonathan, and the producer and writer, and he came over and he travelled with us for a little bit, and we wrote, and we got a little studio in Senac, and we wrote Molly Town, which was about a couple that I met in Bordeaux. And Water For Your Soul, which is about that 
traveling thing and finding yourself and feeding yourself. I really want to make just like this really wicked reggae tune with all the stuff that we've been listening to because he's always playing me music and more stuff than I would ever hear before because I don't go out really, I'm really boring. But Harry's always out hearing new stuff and, and he loves reggae. So I said, Harry, send me over some bits. So he did and he popped it all together and that's how you have Harry's symphony. So we did that in Senac and it's great. It's really nice, I, I really like that time. And we finished LP1 there too. We finished some vocals and, you know, just got a bit of stuff done. You know, it's, without sounding cheesy, love is the driving force of our whole human race. That's why we do anything. It's why we get up in the morning. You know, yes, I love music and we say that's my water, but love is really it. You know, it's the love of music that pushes me forward. And some people find love in, you know, baking cakes or in their child or in their husband or in their wife or whatever it is, but it certainly is the driving force. I really do believe that in every single case. Um, I've been traveling around the world a lot and I write about that and I write about the world and what I see, but mostly it's about individuals loving each other or losing the love or wanting the love you know it's all about that everything is about that i mean we try to pretend that it's not but it's not true man it just is you need to let go.